And as a BBC led initiative, we'll be part of some incredible people to create the BBC Microbit. Launched only this week, I've just seen one. You are among the first people in the country to see and have demonstrated to you a BBC Microbit. Now, this pocket sized computer is going to get coding on the curriculum. It's every Year seven school child from this autumn will have a BBC micro kit. And as I said, we've partnered with some incredible people to make this happen. And from one of our partners, and absolutely instrumental in helping to develop the micro kit, was Microsoft. And from Microsoft, please welcome Steve Hodges. Thank you. Thanks very much. Hey, come in, come in. We've got some seats. This is, this is, I hope this is going to be good. This is going to be good. So we've got one of the first uh, uh, BBC micro bits. It's still a prototype at this stage, but it's pretty close to the final design. Um, and we're going to be demonstrating that a bit later on. Uh, but the first thing I thought is, um, I'd ask how many of you are coding? How many people have written some code? Okay, so a few. What about the people at the back? Can you hear okay? How many, have you written any code? Yeah, a little bit. So, um, so what I want to do in the next 20 minutes or so is a couple of things. First of all, show you how uh, accessible writing code can be, learning, learning how computers work and learning how to program computers can be, but also get you a bit excited about it as well, right? Because there's a, a tremendous potential. Uh, there's so many things you can do, uh, both in your career but also at home as well. So, that, so I'm Steve Hodges. I work at Microsoft Research, which is here in the city. How many people knew that Microsoft had a research lab here? Oh, that's good. So. Um, this is a, oh, we're over here on we. So this is a picture of our building. So even if you didn't know we were there, you might recognize the building. It's on Station Road. So many of you will have driven past it or walked past it on the way to the station. And at Microsoft Research, you know, our job really is to try and invent the next wave of computing technologies. Um, I'm a hardware guy, so my particular job is to look at new devices and how new hardware devices might change the way we interact with computing. So usually when I'm giving presentations, I'm talking about some something that you know is far out, that's five or ten years out that we think is going to make a big difference to computing. But actually, uh, what I want to do uh, now, unusually for me, is look the other way. Go take a bit of a historical look. So. Uh, 30, 35 years ago, right, in the, in the early 1980s, if you looked up and down the country, you would find um, a lot of scenes a bit like this, right? So uh, that was true of me as well, right? That was me, that video was me hunched over a BBC microcomputer that I was lucky enough to have at home. I had it plugged into my, uh, my parents' TV. We actually had that very TV. Um, and I spent many years, like, you know, on and off in the evenings and the weekends, uh, playing with my BBC microcomputer, learning how to program, learning how the technology worked. And because I was also interested in hardware, I was plugging devices into it and had, had these reports. And so I was learning about the interaction between uh, the programming and the physical world through, through actuation and sensing. Um, but of course, this device wasn't just a home computer. I mean, it was one of the, the first home computers that really took off, especially in the UK. But it was more than a home computer because the BBC put together a whole package around it, right? So they had TV programs, and together with a sort of industry, uh, there were teaching materials, and there were other, um, you know, different programming languages, and different things you could use to expand your BBC Micro, and it became uh, very well established in schools. So in, the, uh, in that first part of the 1980s, I was using these at school as well, and I learned computer science, right? I was taught, I got an O-level in computing. So this rather ironic thing happened, right? So in the early 80s, we were all doing this, and then computers, of course, were getting more and more established. They were becoming more and more important in our lives. Um, and so I guess the government and the, and the schools realized they need to teach more kids. Um, and so they really doubled down on getting everyone exposed to computers, but they also subtly changed what they were teaching. So, so rather than teaching computer science, right, how computers work, we started teaching how to use computers. So you'd learn how to use, uh, you know, Excel and Word, Word processors and stuff, but you wouldn't, kids, basically a whole generation for 25 years, we weren't really teaching people how computers work, how to program them, how to the about fundamental technology. So luckily that started changing a couple of years ago. So the UK is leading the world because um, we have just in the past school year put computer science back in the curriculum. So every child has to learn about computing. They have to learn about computer programming. They have to learn about how technology works, how computers communicate with each other, as well as how to use them, of course. Um, you know, this, this, this issue of the last 25 years has been a global phenomenon. We're, we're, we're teaching kids how to use computers, but not how to program them. And, and so the BBC, the, uh, so the UK is leading the way 
and, and as part of this, and as part of the year, this year for the BBC is the Make a Digital sort of focus. Um, and so the BBC has got together with a number of industry partners to try and really re-energize computer science education in our schools. We're really excited to be uh, announcing this initiative, which was launched just earlier this week. It's called the BBC Microbit. Um, and so the idea behind the Microbit is to um, is to actually uh, make a small computing device, uh, which this is, this is one here, um, and, w and with the BBC and in conjunction with all the, the partners who are sponsoring uh, the Microbit initiative, we're giving every school child in year seven in the entire country one of these devices uh, towards the end of this year. So that's like seven or eight hundred thousand children will have these things. And they're not for the schools, right? They're, they're for the kids. And the idea behind this is to really kind of inspire and get people really excited. Now, now that the, they have the opportunity, because computer science is back, being taught by schools, but we want them to be inspired to seize that opportunity and see what they can do to make uh, uh, to program devices and, and, and start being the, the generators of the next wave of technology, rather than just consumers of technology. So what I thought I'd do next is um, give you a little bit of a demonstration. So uh, this is the BBC Microbit website. Um, and, and one of the things we've done with the BBC Microbit is actually uh, the programming environment is completely online. Uh, so that means it's very accessible. You can access it through a laptop, whether it's a PC or a Mac, but also through a touch-based device, so an Android Slate or a, an iPad or a, a smartphone. And uh, you can immediately start coding in the web browser. And then when, it, it, when you've got your code um, sort of to working to the level you want, you can then just download it over a USB cable uh, directly onto your Microbit. Um, and the Microbit has got uh, a microprocessor built into it and with, with its own uh, memory, so that you can take the code that you've written and permanently flash it into the device. So you can rewrite it with new code anytime you want to, but what it also means is this device becomes a standalone device that works by itself. You don't have to have it plugged in to a PC or you know, a, a tablet. So there's, a, there's going to be, um, at launch time, there will be a number of different programming environments you can use. We've got a couple available already. And I'm going to, I'm going to give you an example of uh, programming using a block editor. So if any of you have used a, a language called Scratch, come across Scratch at school, it is a very accessible way of getting into computing to start with. Um, and it doesn't use a lot of text. You don't have to type lots of computer instructions. It's very graphical. Um, and as, as I'll show you at the end, if we have time, you can actually graduate from this graphical language onto the more text-based language. So it's a very natural progression from the slightly dumbed-down programming environment to a more sophisticated one. So I'm going to say, let's create a new project using this block editor. Um, and it's, it's suggesting I call it a stunning script. So script is really the name for the program that we're creating. Um, and I'm going to do, you know, I'm, I'm, I start off with this canvas. It's a little bit foreboding because it's pretty empty. Uh, but if I just come over here, um, and click on basic, it gives me some basic blocks. And perhaps one of the most basic is this one here, show string. So I grab that and I drop it onto my canvas. And so each one of these blocks is really a way of telling the computer to do something. It's like a, a line of code, really. Um, and this block simply says, show a string, which is the sort of computing name for some text, some uh, uh, a sentence or whatever. And this string that's programmed here is, is hello world. Um, and it actually says with interval, uh, 100. We'll get back to that in a minute. So it's going to show the string Hello World. So directly in the web browser, I can click Run. And this program is running, and you'll see it's showing a little simulation. So on the right-hand side, this is what my micro bit looks like. Um, and if you uh, squint your eyes a little bit, you'll see this red stuff spinning past. And in fact, that red stuff, I'll do it again. That red stuff is the text Hello World. Can you see that? Can you see the letters going by? Um, and so, of course, it, it's saying that because that's what I programmed it to do. So I could, I could easily change uh, the text here, and I could say hello, and I could pick someone's name. Any names? Yes. Peter. So if I change that to hello, Peter, and click run, then you'll see it's now saying hello, Peter. So this is, of course, still a very virtual experience. One of the things we found with work we've done in Microsoft research is that uh, with kids in the classroom, this is great. Some people love this, right? Some of the kids really love this. But some of them, it's still very virtual. It still seems a bit far away. And making it tangible by having a physical device makes all the difference. So what I'm going to do next is uh, use this compile button here, um, which does something, uh, something special. So what this does is takes that code, which is just that one line, that one block at the moment, um, and it actually goes away to a, a computer that's on the internet and turns it into code that will run on here. So my, um, oh, there we go. Oh, I'm good. It's a little bit of a slow connection here, but um, it's saying it's made the code and do I want to save it? So if I save it as 
out and the dialogue's come up on my other screen here. So I'm just going to save it uh, basically directly onto the micro bit here. I get this little flashing light which indicates that it's copying the code over. And if all goes well, that should stop uh, flashing. And now, if I press the reset button on the back um, and get it the right way up, sorry, you will see that um, the text is now scrolling across here. So one of the things I mentioned, of course, this is a standalone device, so I can disconnect it from my computer. Uh, it doesn't have any power, but I don't have to plug it into another computer. I can just plug it into a battery. And now the text is scrolling across here. So what I could do, it, it, when it stops, the screen goes blank. Okay, there's a little blue button on the back. There are two on the front, but there's one on the back here next, the battery connector. That's the reset button. If I press that again, Start scrolling over again. Okay, let me go about that a different way. I was going to pass this round, but before I do that, let me plug this back in. If I come back to my code, uh, it just showed that once, right? So, uh, so down the left-hand side, I've got these uh, different categories of other blocks. So if I click on loops, I get some blocks which represent loops. And a loop is a computer science construct, which means something has to be repeated again and again. And there's a loop here which is called forever, so that means it really will be repeated again and again, forever. So I can drop that onto my canvas, and in order to make this part of my program, I have to drag these blocks and connect them together. So if I connect this here, what this is saying is show the string, sure, but keep doing it forever. So if I do the run, then it'll come up on the screen here, and it's going to say, hello, Peter. Um, but it's going to repeat itself. It's going to keep saying, hello, Peter. So when it's got to the end, it should just start over again. So if I download that code uh, onto, my, uh, onto my device, I'm been happy with it running in the web browser. I'm now going to make a version of that code which I can put on the, on the device here. So it's the same deal, it's a uh, little light flashing as it uh, reprograms it. If I press that reset button, uh, the text should start coming across. So I'm going to immediately pull the plug on that and I'm going to plug this in uh, here. So I've got this standalone device that's saying hello, hello Peter. And uh, this time, if I've got it right, when it's finished, it'll start again. So I can just hand this around if you guys want to have a look at it. So it's one of the advantages of this device is it is a standalone device. Um, but while that's going around, uh, we can also think about what else we can do here. So, uh, and we have other uh, we have other inputs. Whoops, we have other inputs as well. So we have this uh, notion. It's got a little compass on the board, right? So we can tell which way it's facing, whether it's facing north and south. Um, and so you can make that um, your code, make that part of your code, so it does things depending where you're where you're facing, the, the direction it's facing in. It's got a little accelerometer, which basically says how level it is or how fast it's moving. And you can use that as well. And then one thing you might have noticed on the bottom of the device, there are these holes, and there's this kind of a, this is actually a connector on the bottom, and, and there are these little holes. So these holes are basically designed so that you can put crocodile clips and connect to extra circuitry, or you can make something with, with these special pins on it and plug in this little buzzer that you can easily plug into the device. So you can expand the hardware as well. And we imagine that uh, people will make a variety of accessories you can plug the device in to make it do more things. Uh, so that, that's getting, I think I'm pretty much towards the end of my time, but I will just show you one more thing, if that's, if that's okay with the guys here. Um, which is, so this language I've shown you, is called, it's a block-like language, it's very much like the language Scratch, which is a, a, a sort of uh, really uh, MIT-led um, the development of this kind of, of, of programming language, and showed that kids can engage with it from a fairly early age. But this isn't like what people, the rest of the developers of Microsoft don't use a language that looks like this. So is this really helping our kids? Also, one of the great things you can do um, with this system is you can click convert and you can actually move up a level, you can graduate. So this is still a very uh, a friendly programming environment. It's designed actually to be very touch based, so you can program uh, using this system, it's called Touch Develop. You can program using just the touch interface on a tablet, for example. Uh, but what we've done is graduate the code. So that structure I had that was in, the, in those blocks, it was quite easy to understand, but it's just translated to a similar structure but with, with uh, text language. So here it's saying, uh, basically with your micro bit, do forever. That was our loop that was originally had a forever loop. And this is the end of the loop. So everything in this section is going to be repeated forever. And then what we're doing is saying, well, if your micro bit button is pressed, if the A button is pressed, then show the image uh, which we created. 
and otherwise clear the screen. So it's very much the same commands that we gave it previously, but it's now much closer to the kind of programming language that you ultimately end up, if you end up with a, with a career or, or doing more serious programming. So I think that, that kind of finishes what I wanted to show you. I just wanted to give you an overview of the micro bit, how you use it, what it's about, what it looks like, and, and more importantly, why it's important, right? It's really important for us to get our, our next generation